Do you? Ready. All right. I got to start with this spray gunner, and I do have a special guest today, Jeff Jeff Chamberlain from uh, Liquid Kit. Liquid like I just shoes. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about blazer. I mean, you're the specialist in that. And honestly, I had some questions in the past from customers doing you know the shoes. And for me, it's always the scariest thing because it's down to the ground. It gets so well, smashes in the old ways oh, to yeah. do it. Yeah. And when I heard, I didn't uh, attend your class here, unfortunately, but I heard uh, you talking about preparation laser and some other stuff. Man, you know your thing. Uh, oh yeah. You know what yeah. I'm talking about. And I was surprised. So starting with the preparation, you don't even sand it. Not, not usually, no. Um, certain leathers can be sanded. Uh, typically, you're, the idea is you want to keep the leather intact. It's just mm -hmm. like skin. It is skin. Even though it's tanned and not living tissue technically, it, you have to treat it as like skin. So, you know, your, your goal is to stain it. Mm. Instead of, you know, paint over it, you want the paint to soak into it and mm. play well with it. Uh, you don't want to restrict it from moving or stretching. So the products that we developed, you know, they help that. They also allow it to breathe. That's mm -hmm. really important. If you don't let the leather breathe, it'll dry out and crack. So the paints you choose, everything you choose has to be, you know, breathable and stretchable. And, and you know, it goes into the stretchable and flexible, two different things. But stretchable is very important because when you get a rock or something, mm -hmm. you know, jabbed into the side of your shoe, that stretch, mm -hmm. if, it, if everything stretches with it, it's going to be okay. Okay. And I know some people for different projects use kind of clear coat or whatever uh, primer first. But we have a primer, yeah. Um, the primer, the primer is more for like if you have uh, like dingy old shoes you're working on, something that may not even have the best adhesion after cleaning. Um, that's when you'd want to use a primer, uh, rubber, plastics, mm. stuff like that. So. The primer, you know, it's not meant for brand new leather. There's really no reason to prime brand new leather. It's it's ready to go. That's what I noticed. I mean, on your class and you do any preparation, just I mean, cleaning the wheels. Uh, you use 40, 40, 40, 20, right? 40, 20. Um, we use 40, 20 as a safe bet because it has just enough acetone in it to get you in trouble uh, without being too aggressive. So for beginners, um, it's a really good product to use. Kind of mm -hmm. keeps you safe, guarantees that you're going to get it clean. Um, you know, you can get deep into, you know, like the chucks really have a lot of stretch. So you really should use straight acetone for cleaning them. And that goes way deep into what, what product to use for what, mm -hmm. but, um, that's for another day. <laughs> so when after that you prepared your shoe, you went to the illustration colors. And for some reason I thought the wicked is more kind of universal for all the surfaces, but you're choosing that illustration. Why? Uh, illustration can stretch. That's got that's got some serious stretch to it. Now, Wicked is self cross-linking, so that it actually can like kind of tie up the mm -hmm. leather fibers and make it stiff. Mm -hmm. You don't want the leather to be stiff because it's going to stretch whether the paint will or not. So you end up with cracks. Uh, paint like that will stain. It'll uh, get down deep into the into the fiber of the leather and it'll stretch, which, you know, the binder is going to be there no matter what you do. So that binder needs to stretch just as much as the leather, which is at least 300 percent on most leathers. So we chose uh, illustration colors as our main go to just for that reason. And uh, it's done us very well. So. We, we're going to stick with it. Thank you, yes. Thank you, Credix, for a good product. And Thank you. <laughs> then we're going uh, down to your uh, product line. So, yeah, we got um, pretty much everything. We got, you know, an air coat. The air coat is um, for color blendings. Um, so, like, if you need to make a color more mm -hmm. transparent, uh, illustration colors have something similar to that. So, you really, you know, if you're using illustration, you don't really need to go for that. But uh, what this does is it'll you know, take a stencil, mm -hmm. fill all the cracks in the stencil, all the spots where it's not getting down into the grain. Mm -hmm. And then when you paint over it and you peel your stencil away, you have nice clean lines because this has taken up all the spots where it's going to bleed. Mm -hmm. So that's mostly what we use this for. The other uh, places we use this is if we're working on a portrait and mm -hmm. we need to do some scratch techniques. Mm -hmm. This is like a clear layer to just kind of save your spot. It's wonderful. Okay, wait there. Scratch so. technique on laser? Yeah, doing like scratch techniques. Um, I know you guys do a lot of that in your studio. Well, we're using the, the uh, synthetic paper or other scratch pool, but I didn't know you could. Exactly. Yes. You're not going to damage it too much? Right. So this this is really soft. Um, it doesn't have a lot of body to it. So when you scratch the paint that you've put over this, mm -hmm. 
it will scratch through into this and stop. Mm -hmm. It will make it through there eventually if you don't so slow down. So, 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 you know, you got to use probably two coats if you're going heavy on scratching. Um, also racing, if you're using erasers. Okay. I use a lot of erasers on my portraits and it's a really nice way to work out some highlights. Scratch and shoot, you're opening, opening your eyes. <laughs> some you can do a lot of things, yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, after you finish doing all of your art, mm -hmm. I usually try to make sure everything is totally dust free. Really important that's dust free because this stuff, anything it grabs onto, mm -hmm. is going to be permanently locked to the leather. Once this dries, it's game over. So okay. you got to get all the dust off of there. But we have every finish, you know, that's really common or popular. We have a very high gloss. Um, we have a factory, which is pretty natural leather looking. Mm -hmm. So like if you look at most cars these days, mm -hmm. they're like a factory finish. Um, and we kind of just chased Nike and Converse mm -hmm. for that. So then you get into matte. Matte is everybody's favorite. Um, this is just a hair over totally dead flat. So it's, it's almost completely dead flat, no sheen. Um, but this has just enough sheen to look very luxurious. This is the go-to for my studio mm -hmm. and for pretty much everyone else's. This is a hot seller. Um, and then you have flat. Flat is exactly what it means. It's dead flat. There is no shine at all. Still totally crystal clear. Um, it won't, you know, gray out your blacks or anything like that. Keeps everything nice and vibrant. It's a really good product. Um, we just introduced our four ounces. And um, the four ounces are just selling like crazy because, I mean, you go through this mm -hmm. stuff. These will do like 10 pairs of shoes and these will do about 20, mm -hmm. you know, respectively. Um, so you say a little bit. You know, if you're doing high numbers of shoes, it's important. I have not seen intercoat here. Do you have a four ounce intercoat? We don't do the four ounce intercoat yet. Um, we make almost all of our stuff. All of our finishers are made in house. Mm -hmm. um, our intercoat. Part of it is made in house, like mm -hmm. actually manufactured from scratch mm -hmm. raw materials. So we're trying to work on our equipment and grow everything. It's just been real expensive. So we do throw so much of our money right back into our business. We're, we're very passionate mm -hmm. about That's it. So um, Intercoat and Primer will be coming. It'd probably be before uh, next year, but probably mm -hmm. towards the end of December. So. We broke into the gloss here the other day. <laughs> that gloss yeah, yeah. is just something to speak of. But yeah, these are all um, available here at Spray Gunner, yeah, along with the ounces. illustration line. Um, one size is one ounce, uh, two, eight. Yeah. I like the two ounce bottles. The, the one ounce bottles, you know, they, mm. they go pretty far, but I get excited when I'm mixing colors. So I mm. usually mix like three times too much. Most okay. people are like that. So I like to go for the two ounce. It gives me a little bit more to play with. And those products, uh, they're usable for canvas shoes, right, as well? You can use them on canvas. Um, we always recommend kind of like going for factory or mm -hmm. gloss for canvas um, because it is going to soak into the leather or to the canvas mm -hmm. and be, you know, yeah, kind of so taken on. Canvas, yeah. It's going to yeah. take on the look. If you go with flat on the canvas, mm -hmm. it's going to flatten out the canvas. It's kind of odd to mm -hmm. look at. So um, I wouldn't say it's real appealing on canvas. It just it kind of throws like a holographic look to it. It's weird, okay. but um, yeah, you can use this on canvas. It sticks very well to Yupo. So mm -hmm. if you want to do a final varnish on your Yupo, you need to give this stuff a shot. Sometimes um, it'll also be cleanable, so you can take like you know regular household mm -hmm. cleaners and wipe it down because it's chemical proof. I mean, it's chemical resistant. We're gonna say that because I do know of a few chemicals that will ruin this stuff. But you won't see them on your, on your shelves at Walmart. <laughs> okay, anyway, so available spray gunner, both these products. Uh, chemistry, actually, I had uh, Jacob at Henry class, who is the head of uh, shipping here and he does air brushing himself. So we're a little more educated, not as you, of course, but if you know, if somebody is hard to reach him on the line, you can contact us for technical questions. We have a little bit more knowledge now in this one. Today class, he got with you, so hopefully he knows some stuff and he, oh, yeah. he's, he's in chemistry, so should remember important things. And just heads up, there's a new product coming out soon and I just uh, let Jeff test it. Ah. Just, yeah. So this little compressor, you might see something similar, but they're all uh, single action and it's gonna be a double action connected with some good air brushes. So a little, little compressor, just heads up, you know, look for it uh, somewhere in November. 
pretty much before Black Friday we're gonna release it under a no-name brand. And thank you for watching. Thank you, Jeff, for information. Thank you for having me. Pleasure having you. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Love this place. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you later. Yep.